Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Krima joins me today to unpack the latest news in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashley. Can you tell us about African Rainbow Minerals spotlighting Grade is King, as well as the company's war on waste? You know, I think it's very important to try and do mining in a more efficient manner. You know, we've been trying this for decades. We've been trying to get people out of the danger areas. We've been trying to mine remotely. And it seems that African Rainbow Mineral is now on the brink of this success. And they need to do it at their Bocconi mine. And <clears throat> the idea will be that these narrow stopes will be mined in such a way that you maximize grade and you minimize dilution once and for all and you do it remotely, and the people aren't there, it could really change the, the situation in terms of value coming out of that mine. And it might even mean, and it looks like it will, that you don't need to have such a big surface tailings dump because you won't be taking that much out of the mine. And where you have actually mined, you will refill and backfill underground. And because of the high grade, and you know the low dilution, it's going to make this feasible economically. But it looks like all the boxes are going to be ticked here. And it's coming at a very important time because you'll start with this reef boring, but it could go into automation. It could go into a whole new phase. And it's starting right now, and they'll be reporting on how it works in about six months. And Petro Diamonds expects diamond prices to stabilize um, to the end of this year and expects to see some improvement in 2025. Yes, and uh, you know, I think hopes are high that Petra is right because there's a disrupted world at the moment and in a disrupted world, you know, people aren't buying diamonds. The demand isn't there, which makes it very difficult for, for diamond mining companies. You can see with Petra, you know, they've pulled back on expansion, they've cut back on uh, capital. So they're actually moving ahead in a way that with the stabilization and then the improvement, they, they're going to be put into a good position. But a lot of the other diamond mining companies, you know, one puts a question mark over them. And we're looking at some of them wanting to dispose now, you know, like Anglo-American wanting to separate the beers. It's probably the worst time you could think of this, you know. So perhaps they'll mark time on this to wait for better price environment in the diamond business. And lastly, it tells about the U.S. grants to South 32's Hermosa project, highlighting manganese battery opportunity. You know, everybody in manganese now is looking at how they can get manganese sulfate into battery electric vehicles. We've seen MMC in, in Bombella. They're probably ahead of everybody. They, they're actually moving very, very fast to satisfy what their customers want at this point, and then they'll go into creating the sulfate from ore in the next step. But you have a situation now where, you know, we don't associate manganese mining with the Americans, do we? All of a sudden, you know, you, you get a Johannesburg-listed company, South 32, working in the United States and finding that with its uh, exploration into Amosa and getting manganese, they have been offered an incentive already by the American uh, Department of Energy to actually produce the sulfate so that it will be in a good space in the United States. Uh, the logistics will be handy to get this into the market. We'd love to see some incentivization down here. You know, um, we, we do see that um, m mines down here are looking at it very carefully. So you see that Jubilee, which is... Um, in the Kalahari, which is a fantastic resource for quality manganese, is looking to produce sulfate for the electric uh, battery market. But they're saying, you know, we, we're far from the markets. We're going to be far. So they're all looking at probably doing the beneficiation outside. We're lucky with MMC, which is headed by Bernard Swanepoel in, in Bambela, because they already produce the world's purest manganese. And they're able now to quickly change that to get into the market ahead of everybody and then look to producing it from ore. But because they, they produce it from waste at the moment. But when they start producing it from ore, they're also going to look at the logistics, you know, which could be 
something they may have to do because they supply into the Japanese markets, they supply into Europe, they supply into the US. And then we've got uh, Gianni in Botswana putting up a demonstration plant uh, in the West Rand here, wanting to also get their stockpile of manganese into the battery system. So it, it, it's awakened a, a lot of activity. But, you know, when you think, how are you going to compete now if these big countries incentivize people? And if they are close to logistics, it's going to be inter interesting to see how it pans out. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. Thank you, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly daily email newsletter.